What is going on guys? Today I want to show you how to change material based off of height or at least the height of the world. So what I've got here is if I move these meshes you can see it changes from red to blue depending on how high or low they are. Now right now I believe that's on the actual exact center of the grid when it starts to fade. Now I have two values here that I could change in my instance. I can make it fade more. So now it takes, as you can see on the pillar actually, you can see it's taking longer to fade between the two. If I raise it up, you can see. And I can also change the height of it. So at what height I need to put them to change the color. And if I reverse that value, how low you need to put them. So I'm going to go over how to do that today. If it resets, there you go, cool. Right. So let's create material. Move this over here. And we're going to call this changing height. I'm going to open that up. So, first thing you need to do is you need to write world position. Now, this is the main tool that determines the magic. So, if I preview this, you can see in here from the center of the grid that what it's doing is it's identifying the values that are above the grid, below the grid, to the left of the grid. To the right of the grid and whatever. So D, Y, Z, and X values. So next thing we want is a break free component. Now, if I connect this up, this is great because what this does is I can just grab the blue value out of that. And if I put that into an add, we can preview it. So that is now just taking anything above the basis of the grid anything in the Z direction. Now something I didn't add is a divide. Now the reason we want a divide is because look how bright this is. I mean I'm also adding a 1 to it but even dividing it by 2 here is still pretty bright. So you could divide that by as much as you want and what that will do is basically determine the fade. My mouse is really laggy. That will determine the fade. So if I put it to like 100, it's going to move it. But you can see that's fading a lot more. So we'll keep it 100 for now. Move these over to the left. Now with the add, this value here is now going to control how high we're going to need to put. Like The more you add means how high you're going to need. In fact, it might be the opposite on a second. Yeah, yeah, it's the opposite. So... Um, if we put it to the minus, you can see now it needs to be higher before it changes to the other value. If we put it to plus, we we'll do the opposite. Now we need to clap that because we don't want the values going above 1 and 0, or at least the maximum minimum values. Then we need to lerp it. So now this is pretty much the entire of the um, actually getting the alphas for it, or the mask for it, should I say. So now we'll get just two colors. We'll get that one and that one. We'll make this one green. And we'll make this one yellow or orange. That's, oh no, no, that's like yellow. Cool. We'll just put it in base color. Now, so we can have it as an instance, we'll just right click this one and say, call it height. And we'll grab this one and call it fade. And we'll put the base at 100. There you go. Have a click apply. And we go back into the project. Now let's duplicate these two across. Put that on there. Now you can see it's fading between those two values. Let's make it instance. So right click and make an instance. Jump into the instance. Need to have that separate window. And we could change the two values of height and fade. Cool. So again, the height and the fade now. 
going to fade more. The higher you turn the, the lower you turn the height is how high it's going to fade between two. So all the way. Sorry about the aura exposure because it's such a dark scene. It's a bit hard to see. All the way up here is when it's going to fade between two. And again, if you turn the value to positive, it will do the opposite effect. So that is how you change a material based on the height of the world. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I should be producing another video to show you how to sort of use this with sand or with like snow on the tops of mountains. So that way it dynamically places those two there instead of having you to vertex paint them yourselves. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you want a tutorial, write a comment, tell me what you want. And bye bye.